I think we can all agree that those touchline shouts in Football Manager are one of the most dreaded and misunderstood features. Well, that ends today because I did a little research and in this video, I'm going to show you how each of those shouts work, what they affect and when to use them. Let's go. What's up guys, my name is Jochen aka Leo Demus. welcome back to the FM Scout channel and as I mentioned already, I'm going to show you everything I found out in my little research about those dreaded touchline shouts. At the end of the video, I'm also going to give you a life saving tip. It shouldn't take too long today's video, so make sure to stick until the very end to become a shouting master. And as always, guys, if you have any remarks or questions or whatever, leave them down in the comment section. And if you appreciate us making this kind of content, do not forget to support the FM Scout channel. Hit that big thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Also check out my own Leo Demus channel. The link is down in the description. If you like Wonder Kid videos, experiments and live streams, it might be the place for you. So feel free to check that out. Massively appreciate it. Now, I know that those shouts are kind of considered as like a mythical creature or whatever. So let's start with what they are, what they aren't and why we should use them. Let's get something out of the way from the get go. Shouts do not affect your tactics whatsoever. Got it? They do not affect tactics. They can, however, be used to alter the mood, AKA morale of your players during a game. Shouts can be used every 10 minutes and they are contextual to what's happening on the pitch. What I mean by that is the same shout can give different results depending on what is happening at that point in time in the game. Now a massively important and often overlooked thing is that you can shout at your whole team, what we all like to do, guilty, but you can also shout at an individual player or even multiple players at the same time. So to actually do it, you all know this probably, is just go to shouts, shout to the entire team if you want to, or go to individuals, literally choose the individuals and press confirm shout, or you can even go down here, left click on a player, touchline shouts, boom, it's the same thing. And although it is the same functionality, whichever way you choose to do it, we will see later on in the video that some shouts are way more designed to be shouted at a individual player and others are more suited to shout at the entire team. Because yes, shouts can be used to fire up and refocus your players, but they can also be used in a wrong way. And I've been there as well. And then we have negative effects from that. And we don't want that. So guys, let's go over those shouts one by one. I'll tell you the benefits and the potential pitfalls. And I'll also show you the situations where I think it is most beneficial to use each and every one of those shouts in. Let's do it. First up on the list, encourage. Now encourage is used for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to boost a low morale. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, only use this shout if a player actually needs it and don't just use it because you don't know what to say or it seems like the safe option. Trust me, it will backfire and have a negative effect. So when to use it at the beginning of the match. And I'm not saying I do this in every game, but I have noticed that I've never had any negative results if I do so. And it kind of makes sense, right? To give your players a tiny extra morale boost at the beginning of a game. But be warned, apart from those opening minutes, be very careful with your timing when using this shout. Only a couple more options I would really recommend. That is when you've just gone down a goal or your opponent has equalized. At the very beginning of the second half, if your team is not winning. And in those last 10 minutes, if you desperately need a crucial goal to stay up or to win the title or whatever, that's also a good moment. Now, those were all on a team level and on a individual player level. I would recommend to use this if, for example, a player has missed a penalty or if some player has made a mistake that actually led to a goal. Now, the pitfalls, so the moments you would kind of expect this shout to be working, but it won't, are these. Any given time when you are at least two goals up, do not further encourage your players. And the exact same thing, but the other way around, if you are more than two goals down, there are other shouts to be used. Do not use the encourage. Next up, calm down. 
may be the simplest of all shouts to explain because you will use this when you don't want a player who is getting angry for some reason to get booked or let alone sent off. And it also can be used on a team level if your whole team for some reason is going into berserk mode, you can try and calm them down by using this shout. So if a player is on the edge of suspension or if you just see that he's committing a lot of fouls in the game, feel free to use the shout. Don't worry if like his morale drops. What do you choose? Do you want a player who, is, who has a high morale but will get a red card? Or a player who's kind of calmed down but his morale is somewhat lower? I know which one I'd pick. So no real pitfalls in this one guys. I think it's pretty obvious. Let's move on to the next one. And that one is focus. And I think it's another pretty straightforward one because it's kind of the same as the calm down shout in the sense that it might drop the player's morale a bit, but no worries because you might just get the result you actually wanted by doing this shout. If you use it in these situations, and these can be on a team level or on an individual level, I'll leave that up to you. It's kind of the same thing here. If you have given away a dangerous free kick or a penalty, or if you've let in an easy goal. You can also use this one if a player got sent off and you wanna like refocus the rest of your squad without going ultra defensive. Next up on the list is fire up. Now in previous editions of Football Manager, I think this was called show some passion. And this is kind of the bumped up version of encourage. Now in all honesty, I rarely use this shout if ever because it is more powerful than an encourage shout and not all players are capable of dealing with that because it all depends on their personality and I'm just gonna say if you have a team full of Roy Keane clones you'd have nothing to worry about but if you are like most teams and have a mix of balanced personality players and whatever I would recommend you be careful with the fire up shout. But a few situations where you could at least try it in are these. On a team level, I would try it out if a match goes totally bonkers and you have some crazy situations going on. For example, in the last 10 minutes, you have hit the crossbar three times. You're desperately looking for that equalizer. You had a goal disallowed. All of that, if that happens, I would give this shout a go. And on an individual level, it's maybe somewhat easier to recognize the moment to use this shout. If, for example, a player has missed a penalty or has scored an own goal and you can see his morale dipping, I try this out. And literally, guys, every other situation than the ones I just mentioned are the potential pitfall situations because logically, you might think this is an awesome shout to use, but I would highly recommend to just not do it. Next shout is no pressure. Now let's think logically again. No pressure is probably made to make your players less anxious and calm, right? Well, be that as it may, just as with other shouts, if you use it wrong, it can backfire like hell. This is another shout that I rarely use because no pressure for me means I'm okay, you're okay, we don't really have to win, just play some football, kick the ball around and we'll see what happens. And for me personally, but this is a personal choice, that is never my mindset when I go into any game because I want my players to be at their best all the time, even in friendlies, because I'll do the rotation or whatever before the match. But during the game, I want the players that are out on the pitch to give their all. Now, the only time that I would kind of think it's justified to use this shout is when an individual player is actually forced by me to play in a position that he is not at all comfortable with. So for example, if you have an injury crisis or whatever emergency going on in your team, and there is a certain player that is playing totally out of his comfort zone, then I would say it's kind of okay to say, you know what, man, I know it's an awkward position for you. Just do what you can, and that's it. And I would highly recommend for the love of humanity to just not use this shout in any other situation. Done. And then we have a shout we all know. Demand more. And it is simply asking more effort of your players because they are not playing well or well enough. Now the best thing about this shout is that it usually doesn't get you into trouble even if you use it at kind of the wrong time. On a team level, I would use this at whatever point in the game, simply when the scoreline is not good enough, even if you are, in fact, 
winning that game. Because if you are Liverpool and you are playing a tier 6 team in a cup competition and it's 1-0 at halftime, I think we can all agree that's not good enough, even when you are playing your B team. And on an individual level, it is exactly the same thing if there are certain players that are underachieving while the rest of your team is doing their job. Use that demand more shout on that player and I promise you, you will see it will have a positive effect. No pitfalls whatsoever for this shout, I'll say it again. Do not be afraid to use this a lot. Two shouts left and they are kind of connected. Let's first tackle Praise. It is the opposite of Berate, which we will look at in a minute. And both of these shouts are probably the easiest shouts to decide on when to use them, right? Because in this case, Praise tells your team you are happy with the way they are playing and with their performance in general. When to use this shout is pretty simple if you ask me, but all I'm going to say is... Don't be too generous. Don't start praising your players in every game after they go 1-0 up or whatever. If you are 2-3 goals up, that's maybe more suited to be the point to start the shout. And on an individual level, it's also the usual suspects. If a guy has scored a goal or has given an assist, if, he, if a keeper saves a penalty, for example, do it. Or when a defender makes a superb goal-saving tackle, also a decent moment to use the praise shout. And that's about it, guys. The same thing goes for the last shout that we will look at, and that is berate. So it's the exact opposite of the praise shout, and it works in the exact same way. So if they are actually playing horrible football, going two goals down, three goals down, that is the moment you want to use the berate shout. And on an individual level, it's the exact same thing. If a player makes a huge mistake leading up to a goal, berate him or if a striker misses chance after chance after chance you know what to do and in general if a player has a terrible match rating maybe your team didn't even do that bad but that player totally sucked berate him so those are all the different shouts that i wanted to show you guys but there is one more huge tip i'm going to share with you right now that can be a lifesaver in certain situations and that tip is Pause the damn game if you want to do a shout. Because depending on your game speed, it might just be that you want to do a shout. The match is going on, there's no highlight. But just when you want to click the shout, the highlight already starts. So let's simulate that here. See what happened? Because no highlight was going on, I clicked demand more because we are in a nil-nil situation here. But I clicked it and the highlight started. So this might mean that this highlight will actually result in me scoring a goal. In which case, I really don't want to do that demand more shout and it's going to get me into trouble. Now I paused the game immediately when I saw that it happened. But there is no cancel shout button because as you can see, the shout drop down is grayed out, so I can't do anything at this stage, right? Luckily, what you can do if you haven't paused the game, which is actually part one of the tip, part two of the tip, what you can do if you failed like I just have, is this. Pause the game when the highlight starts, go to tactics, and behind my face here, you will see the cancel button. Click that, and it will actually ask you, do you want to discard all your changes? Yes, sorry, Bob. It goes back to the game and as you can see, the shouts drop down is now no longer disabled. This means the shout is actually cancelled and now at least you have the chance to watch this highlight and consider if that shout is still valid and just do it again after the highlight, after you have paused the game. Or maybe a totally different shout is more suited in this situation. And that, guys, is all I can tell you about touchline shouts. I really hope this video was useful for you. If you have any questions, remarks, whatever, leave them down in the comment section. Also, hit that like button on the video if you have enjoyed it. And do not forget to subscribe to the FM Scout channel. It is all free for you, but it massively helps us out as creators. And also, don't forget to check out my own Leo Demas channel. The link is down in the description. I hope I'll see you all soon in my live stream chat. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.